In James uh, chapter 3, verse 1, it says, My brethren, let many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man, able to bridle his whole body. And, you know, by the Bible's telling us that teachers or those in front of you have a stricter judgment. Why? Because they're leading you down a road. And so it says, if anyone doesn't offend in word, in other words, if you can bridle your tongue, if you can control your tongue, control your words, that you can become a perfect man. I mean, it, the Bible doesn't say that often. And so our words really reflect who we are. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word that men speak they will give an account in the day of judgment. For by our words we are justified, and by our words are, we are condemned. You know, and so, you know, if you take these two together, it, it's clear in the earlier sessions, it says, if a man says he has faith and doesn't have fit corresponding actions, his faith is dead, right? But here it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so we need to understand that difference. And that difference is what's abundant in us will manifest itself in our words. And so when you, you look at, you know, episodes in your life where maybe before you were saved or uh, uh, during difficult times, you know, your words uh, of anger, or words of rage, words of, you know, uh, of doubt, of self-esteem issues, or whatever it may be, you're, that's what's abundant in you. So we really evaluate ourselves based on what we're saying. You know, most of our prayers are sabotaged by our words. Most of our prayers are sabotaged by our words. We pray one thing and we go out and we say another thing. We, we pray something and we say the exact opposite. And what we're doing is we're, we're, we don't have that faith in our heart to bring us to that place. You know, when you go a little bit further in the chapter, verse three, it says, indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. Now, a horse has a will, right? And we turn their whole body. Look at the ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, yet they are turned with a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. In both of these examples, one has a will and one doesn't have a will. So what it's saying is the real message here is that we're able to turn our direction based on our words. We put a bit in a horse's mouth, we're able to lead him away from where he wants to go. You know, we take the rudder of a ship and we lead it where it, we want it to go. So in both cases, we turn the, you know, the direction through our words. Our words are, you know, basically form our future. I mean, if you're speaking things of doubt, of unbelief, of hurt, of pain, of the circumstances overcoming you, they will. And if you speak words of faith, of, of God's word, you know, just, you know, when you think about it, when you say God's word and you, you pray God's word, your words have to line up with it. And if the, your words don't line up with it, it's going to take you where the circumstances want to take you. You know, again, you know, a ship... It doesn't have a will. It's going to go where the current wants to take it, right? We already learned in, in, in James 1 that we're driven with the wind and the waves. So it'll take us the, the way of the current. It'll take us the way of the circumstances. But if our words are consistent to take us in the other direction, then we, you know, we'll, we'll go in that direction. A horse will try to direct itself, but a bit in the horse's mouth will direct it in the direction that the rider wants to take it. So in both cases, we're talking about controlling our future, you know, and it's the same thing with raising kids. If you speak incorrectly to children, they'll grow up incorrectly, right? If you take the wind out of them and you speak down on them and you browbeat them, right, without nurturing them and correcting them the right way, they will grow up 
And, you know, either way, you'll either raise them uh, in, in the way of the Lord or you'll raise them where they'll be bitter and angry and, 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 and rage. And so we need to be wise. You know, all of us have said things that you can't pull a word back. All of us have said things that would hurt somebody, right? You may have said something, in, you know, inadvertently, but we've said things that hurt people and we need to be able to understand that our words are very powerful. Our, you know, our words really reflect who we are. 